lost and tossed and driven on the restless sea of time. Somber skies and howling tempests off some seed of bright sunshine in that land of perfect day. When the mists have rolled away, we will understand it better by and by. In the morning, by and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of God are gathered home. We will tell the story how we overcome, for we'll understand it better by and by. Put your hand right here. Thirsty hills and barren lands, we are trusting in the Lord and according to his word, we will understand it better by and by. Let's go home. church say amen amen bless the name of God there's some things we don't understand right now but the Bible declares we know in part and we prophesy in part amen but when that which is in part shall be done away we shall know amen bless the name of God somebody shout I don't have to know it all right now 
Amen, because our God knows it all. Come on and worship with me for about 12 good seconds. Amen. Wherever you are in your house, on Facebook, just worship the Lord with us. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, we come uh, with intentionality. We, we come with intent uh, to worship. We come with intent to praise you for your greatness and for your loving kindness. Father, in the name of Jesus, as you know all about us, you are intimately familiar with our circumstances, oh God. We, we pause to thank you anyhow. Because, God, we can rest in your power. We can trust in your power. We can commit our ways into your power in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you and we thank you for your wisdom and your guidance, oh God, which get that, that guides our circumstances, oh God. We thank you for your wisdom, oh God, that orders our steps, oh God, and guides our tongue in the name of Jesus. And our humble prayer, O oh Lord, as we uh, usher ourselves into your presence, O oh God, we just want to thank you for your dying love on the cross through your son Jesus, who is the Christ. And it is that same power that raised Jesus from the dead. It is that same power that will enable us, O oh God, to be overcomers in Christ because your Bible says we are more than conquerors. This is our prayer. Bless us with your presence in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We bless you. We thank you, Holy Ghost. We thank you, God. We thank you. Thank you, God, for accepting our invitation. Would you please, we have your Bibles. We will turn to our response of reading, which is found in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs is one of the wisdom books of the Bible. Amen. Proverbs chapter 2, and we'll read verses 1 through 7 responsively. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you. So that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom for his mouth come not from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. All together. He, he stores, stores up sound wisdom for, for the upright. upright. He, he is, is a shield, shield to those who walk uprightly. God's word, God's people, God's glory. Amen. How many of you know there's no friend like the lowly Jesus? You got 400 friends on Facebook, but you only need one friend in Jesus. Amen. Let us sing it to the glory of God.
number five. Say no, not one. No, come on now, now let's sing with us. Don't you know that? Jesus, no, for the yes. Don't you know that? The Lord will guide us unto the day. Day is done. Yes, yes. a friend like the lowly Jesus. Amen. That's one of my favorite hymns. Amen. No, not one. No, not one. In the words of the Apostle Paul, we bid you grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and for our, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To those that are listening on the phone line, we greet you with a hearty good morning for all of our facers that are on Facebook we greet you with a hearty good morning and to our pew guests they're not really guests but we want to acknowledge Reverend and Minister Hawthorne we got somebody to wave to this morning choir so amen we wave to you Hawthorns and we wave to our audience and we greet you with a good morning. Good morning, brother chief musician. Praise the name of the Lord. Good morning, choir. Good morning. Good morning, brother deacon and brother Steve. Good morning to all of you. God is still good all the time and all the time. God is good. Amen. We thank you for your presence. Uh, those that joined us, we thank you for your patience. Amen. Our broadcast from last week will be available on YouTube. Amen. So we'll, we'll make sure we get a link out to you here on Facebook so you can watch the broadcast from last week in its entirety. Amen. Again, we thank you for your patience and to God is the glory. Amen. We are moving <laughs> quite well this morning. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. This is how it's going to look uh, going forward, beloved, uh, with some minor adjustments. But we praise God that he has given us, amen, the resources to worship, amen, and to get his word out. Let us be blessed once again from this marvelous ministry of music, and we will hear a word from the Lord.
do not pass us by. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. My dear brother, everything is all right? Amen. Everything is all right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I invite your attention uh, to the same verse from last week, Psalm 34, verse 22. Amen. Psalm 34, verse 22. Amen. Amen. It reads uh, on this wise. Amen. Thank you for your word. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. Amen. Bless God. The subject for today is, as it was last week, preserved to praise the Lord. And this will be the second part from last week. Can somebody just whisper under your voice, I've been preserved to praise the Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we, in a real sense, in this text, see two Davids. There are two Davids in this text. Last week, David was a student in that his experience in 1 Samuel chapter 21 taught him that preservation comes through praise, prayer, protection, and provision. Yes, this week, David, in a very real sense, is a teacher. In verse 11, he says, Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear, the fear. That is the holy respect of the Lord. Beloved, how many of you know that life can teach you many things that you won't find in a textbook? How many of you know that life can teach you some things that you can't Google or find on Wikipedia? Have I got a witness this morning? Somebody this morning has a PhD in the school of hard knocks. How many of you know that you can't teach others what God can do for them until you learn what he can do for you? I need to lean on my point this morning. I know God is a healer, and I can tell you he's a healer because God healed me. Have I got somebody out there that feels like that this morning? I know God can make a way for you because God made a way for me. I know God can open up doors for you because I had some doors closed behind me and in front of me, but God opens doors for me. How many of you know that you cannot teach someone else about what God can do uh, until you first learn what he can do for you. Beloved, the basis of David's lesson, the basis of David's lesson is found in verse number 12. Notice what verse number 12 says, who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good. Now, the verse says man, but the question can be applied to anyone. Does anyone 
in here want to live a life that is long and prosperous, if you want to live a full life in the Lord, David says, take notes, church, because here is what you have to understand. So the movement of the text begins in verses 13 and 14. In verses 13 and 14, we first learn that the Lord requires righteousness. The Lord requires righteousness. He says, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. This means that we have to be willing to abandon sin and do good as God gives strength and opportunity uh, to be a peacemaker and not a troublemaker. And beloved, sometimes our best efforts seem to be in vain. Pursue means that we have to work at it with the help and the unction of the Spirit of the Lord. And beloved, you cannot overstate what David says in the text about being watchful about the words you use. Have I got a witness in here? David says, watch your mouth. David says, don't let your mouth write a check uh, that your life cannot cash. If you have a chance, beloved, look over in the book of James. In the book of James, chapter 3, James leans on the point that David makes in Psalm 34. James, chapter 3, it says, the tongue, the mouth, the tongue, the mouth is a hard thing to control. James compares the tongue to the bit in a horse's mouth. And by using the bit, the horse would turn in whichever direction you want it to. Has anybody in here ever been knocked off the horse based on what either you or somebody else said? Then in James chapter 3, he compares the tongue to the rudder of a ship. The rudder is very small in comparison to the ship. And just like the bit turns the horse, the rudder turns the ship. The tongue uh, is hard to control. Y'all, have I got anybody in here whose lives have been run aground? Have I got anybody in here whose lives have been shipwrecked? Have I got anybody in here whose lives have been sunk like the Titanic because of what somebody else says? Then James uh, further leans on the point uh, in this Psalm 34. James uh, compares the tongue to to a small spark, to a small fire. James says that the tongue is a small fire, but that small fire can turn into an inferno, especially when you got folk around you that can pour gas on the situation. Have I got anybody that knows some nosy folk? Have I got anybody that knows some folk that don't know how to mind their business? Have I got anybody in here this morning that are all up in your Kool-Aid and don't know the flavor, whether it's grape, red, or otherwise? James compares uh, the tongue to a small fire, and uh, if you got Got some folk that know how to pour gas on your situation. James says that that small fire can turn into an inferno. And I believe I got some folk this morning that have had your relationship burned down, that have had your reputation burned down because you've got some social arsonists in your personal orbit. But the Bible says uh, that you've got a saddle for that horse. The Bible says Uh, Hey man, you got a life jacket for that ship. The Bible says you've got some fire insurance because the Bible says whosoever guards your mouth and keep your tongue uh, will keep your soul from trouble. The psalmist said already got something for you to keep your mouth busy, church. The psalmist already says is right here in the text. If you need somebody to talk about, uh, already gave it to you in verse number one. Do I need to remind you that I will bless Bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. When you spend your time talking about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for you, you ain't got no time to talk about what somebody else is doing. He says, he says the Lord requires righteousness, but then the text moves to the point that the Lord responds to us. 
Verse number 15, the Lord responds to us. It says that the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of their trouble. Notice what God uses to keep track of us in his spiritual GPS. The text says his eyes are on us and his ears are open to us. This reminds me of an often told story of a little boy that went to the toy store one day with his father. And just as many children often do when they go to the toy store, they get distracted by the toys. The child was distracted by the toys around him and became detached from his father. When he walked in the store, he was holding his father's hand, but after he got distracted by the toys in the toy store, he got separated from his father. The father's instincts kicked in, and the father began to panic because he could not find his child. Up one corridor, the father ran and could not find his child. Down one corridor, the father ran and could not find his child. Ran through aisle after aisle, looking and peeking, looking and asking if anyone saw his son. But his son was lost in a crowd of people. This father then found a security guard working in the store and asked the security guard, do you have surveillance cameras in the store? The guard said, yes. The father said, do you have a monitor in the back? The guard said, yes. The father asked, can you scan the floor? The guard said, yes. The guard began to scan up and down the aisles, and as the father watched the monitors, the father saw his child on the monitor playing in aisle number five. But the child was clearly in a state of panic all by himself among people that he did not know. The father asked the guard, do you have an intercom? The guard says, yes. The father said, keep the camera on my child. The father got on the intercom, called his son's name, and watch this. The son looked around, don't miss this, y'all, because he recognized the voice of his father. And the child cried out, daddy, and the father said, stay where you are, son. I see you, although you can't see me. And I heard your voice, stay where you are, I'm coming. And beloved, I said that to say this. In those moments when you think that God can't see you or that you can't see God. God always sees you and he hears you. So don't move because God is on his way to get you. God responds to us. But then in the next movement of the text, the Bible says that God relieves us. God relieves us. There was a song in 1966. The artist's name was Jimmy Ruffin. I know I got some church folk up in here this morning, but some of y'all remember Jimmy Ruffin. 1966, Jimmy Ruffin had a song, What Becomes of the Brokenhearted. But before Jimmy Ruffin ever sang the song, David answers the question in verse number 18 of what becomes of the brokenhearted. The Bible says that the Lord is near to those that have a broken heart and save such as those that have a contrite spirit. That word contrite means crushed. And the Lord resists the proud, beloved, but God cannot resist the broken. In other words, God keeps himself accessible to the brokenhearted and is always on hand to rescue those uh, that are crushed in their spirit. Uh, Beloved, in this life, we spend a lot of time on broken things. We spend uh, much time and effort on fixing broken things. Uh, Broken cars, 
broken plumbing, broken gadgets, broken iPhones, broken uh, Androids, broken uh, relationships, things that cannot be repaired by human hands. But the Bible says in Psalm 139 uh, that I will praise you, God, because I am fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous all your works and that my soul knows very well. Aren't you glad this morning that God has a warranty over your life? Is somebody glad this morning that God has a guarantee over your life? God has a promise that if you get a defect, a fault, or a failure, God will stand behind his product and your satisfaction is guaranteed. Yes, he, he responds to us. He, he restores us. But my final point in this text is that, that, that God, God, God rescues us. He rescues us. Notice what verse number 19 says. Verse number 19 says, many, not few, not a little bit, but many are the afflictions of of the righteous does not say many of the afflictions of the corrupt does not say many of the afflictions of the immoral does not say many of the afflictions of the dishonest or the unfair but if your Bible reads the same as mine, this messed me up, Reverend Hawthorne. This, this messed with me a little bit. And I'm sure if you're a child of God, this got to mess with you a little bit. The Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous. A whole lot of us can accept the fact, watch this, many folk can accept the fact that bad things happen to bad people. A whole lot of us can digest the fact of good things happening to good people. But, but what about what a man by the name of Krishna said in his book, When Bad Things Happen to Bad People? Lord, I pray every day. I fast when the Holy Ghost tells me to. I go to Bible study when, I, when I'm supposed to. I go to worship God. I love everybody. I, I bless my enemies. But, but, but what about when uh, bad things happen uh, to bad people? Come on in here. Brother Job, and help me lean on this thing. Job would say, I was a righteous man. I went to church every Sunday, but I lost my children. I lost my possessions, and my wife lost her God because she said, curse your God and die. What do you do when uh, bad things happen uh, to good people? And the fact of the matter is, if you keep reading the verse, you got to understand there's only but so much you can do. You got to stick a butt in your situation because the Bible says, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Have I got anybody in here this morning that don't mind raising one or two hands and testifying that if you wait on the Lord and be of good courage, that Lord will come see about you and he will deliver you. But the Lord will deliver you out of them all. But watch this, beloved, in the process, in the process uh, of delivering you. Uh, uh, he, the Bible says he's cutting some folks out of your life. In the process of delivering you, he, he's cutting some good for nothing people out of your life. So while he is delivering you from, uh, uh, when he's delivering you out of some things, he's also delivering you from some people. And does anybody in here know that when God delivers you, you come out of that thing feeling like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Anybody here know that when God delivers you out of that situation, you don't look like what you've been through? And I, I, don't, I don't need to say that for myself. It's right here. It's right here in the text in, in verse number 20. That you don't look like what you've been through. That addiction, you don't look like what you've been through. That abuse, you don't look like what you've been through. Is right here in verse number 20. The text says that he guards all of his bones and not one of them is broken. Is that in your Bible? Guards all of his bones and not one of them is broken. This, this is an example of what we call prophecy in the song. Verse number 20 is what we call a, a messianic prophecy. Messianic prophecy uh, lets you know that, that this verse 
shines the spotlight that this verse is a preview of Jesus' work and ministry on the cross. When you have a chance, beloved, I, I would invite your attention when you have a chance to Exodus chapter 20. In Exodus chapter 12, that is. Exodus chapter 12. And in Exodus chapter 12, there are instructions for the nation of Israel as to how they are to celebrate the Passover. And in Exodus chapter 12, around verse number 26, it says that the Passover lamb must be eaten in one house. And when that lamb is eaten in that one house, The text goes on to say, do not carry any of the meat outside and do not break any of the lamb's bones. If you fast forward from Exodus chapter 12 to John chapter 19 and John chapter 19, you will find out that it led Jesus to the cross to be crucified. And the Bible says in John chapter 19 between verses 33 and 36 that when they came to Jesus and saw that Jesus was already dead, that they did not break his legs. And the reason why they did not break his legs was so that the scripture might be fulfilled that not one of his bones shall be broken. And the reason why Jesus went through what he went through on the cross was to fulfill the prophecy laid out in Exodus. Exodus chapter 12 and in Psalm 34. In other words, beloved, even though you go through your afflictions, watch this, y'all. You want to go through it the way Jesus did. Oh, my God. I need to say that again. Somebody did not get it. All of us go through trials and tribulations sometimes. All of us go through afflictions sometimes. But you, whatever you go through in life, you want to go through it the way Jesus did because God will put his word over your life to get you out of it so that when you come out of it you can give God a shout right now because that is what you call a breakthrough. The definition of your breakthrough is that what you went through did not break you. Amen. What you what you went through did not break you. Finally beloved, my final point the Lord redeems us. The Bible says that the Lord redeems the soul of his servants. And other those who trust in him shall be condemned. Does anybody trust the Lord this morning? Brother Chief Musician, that, that word redeem in verse number 22 means to pay a price for something of equal value. Does anybody remember that little boy I told you about? A few minutes ago, that was walking through the toy store with his daddy. Well, that little boy has another story, another part to his story. Minister Hawthorne, as that little boy was walking out of the toy store with his daddy, he he saw a little race car that caught his attention. But that little boy did not add, did want not, did not want to ask his daddy for that little race car in the store because he didn't think his father could afford it. So this child came up with an idea. I'm going to save all my money. I'm going to save my lunch money. I'm going to save my milk money to get enough money to go back to that store and buy that little race car. Well, beloved, his neighbor next door to him, his neighbor's child gave him an idea. The neighbor said, young child, there is something called a bottle redemption center at the corner store up the street. Anybody remember those bottle redemption centers? Somebody raise their hand. Thank you, Reverend. Those bottle redemption centers. This neighbor told that little boy, if you find every little bottle that you find, if you take it up to that corner store and take it into that redemption center, you can stick your bottle in a machine. Uh huh. And that machine will give you some extra money to save to buy that little race car. Well, won't you know, wouldn't you know, brothers and sisters, that sounded real good to this little boy. And every, every day that he got up, he went outside and looked around on the sidewalk, looked around on the street and looked for a bottle to take back to that redemption center at that store on the corner so he can get his money to save money to buy his race car. Wouldn't you know one day, brother chief musician, this little boy 
find a little plastic bottle laying out on the sidewalk. This little plastic bottle was dirty. This little plastic bottle was dented. This little plastic bottle was damaged. But this little boy was determined to get some money. He didn't know how much, but he was determined to get some money for his bottle. This little boy ran up to the corner store and stood in line at the Redemption Center. (laughs) And there was this man standing in front of him that also had a bottle that he was going to stick in this redemption machine to get his money out. But beloved, this man's bottle did not look like this little boy's bottle. This man's bottle was made out of glass. This man's bottle was relatively clean because you can tell that this man cleaned off the bottle before he brought it to the store. And that man with a proud look on his face with his shiny clean glass bottle took his bottle and stuck it inside the machine and out came a shiny silver nickel. And beloved, wouldn't you know that this little boy began to cry as he stood in line because he saw this man with this fancy, fancy, good-looking, glass, shiny bottle place his bottle inside of the redemption machine and get a shiny nickel in return. And this child began to cry because he began to say to himself, if this man can get a brand new shiny nickel with this fancy looking bottle, and here I am with this dirty, dented, and damaged bottle, I don't think I'm going to get the same amount of money. That little boy stepped up to the machine, and and, and, and the boy was a little too short to reach where he needed to reach. But beloved, that little boy reached up with his dirty, dented, and damaged plastic bottle. And he stuck his bottle in the machine. And when you know that that frown on that boy's face turned into a smile. Because then that little boy put his dirty, dented, and damaged bottle in the machine. That little boy got a shiny silver nickel uh, that the man got that stood in line before him. Uh, Have I got anybody in here this morning? I'll speak for myself. I'm so glad, y'all, that all have sinned uh, and come short of the glory of God. Uh, Have I got anybody in here that don't mind getting happy this morning? Uh, that the Bible does not say y'all have sin. Uh, you're the shout, can't nobody point their finger at me. Uh, but the Bible says that all have sin uh, and come short of the glory of God. Uh, have I got anybody in here uh, that's glad this morning that the wages of sin is death? Uh, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. Uh, have I got anybody in here this morning? Uh, you look real good in your church clothes this morning. Uh, you look real good in your alligator shoes this morning. Uh, but have I got anybody in here this morning uh, that when you look back over your life uh, and you think things over, uh, when you rewind the tape of your testimony, uh, have I got anybody in here uh, that was dented? Uh, Have I got anybody in here uh, that used to be dirty? Uh, Have I got anybody in here uh, that used to be damaged? Uh, But have I got anybody in here uh, that you did like that little boy uh, and you reached up with your hand uh, and you put your hand in God's hands uh, and God redeemed you? Uh, Is anybody in here glad this morning uh, that God redeemed you? Uh, That's why you praise him. because he pardoned you. That's why you worship him. Because he washed him. Have I got anybody in here that don't mind saying it one more time? That I will bless the Lord at all times. When I look back over my life and I think things over, I will bless the Lord at all times. Because Jesus, he paid it all. 
didn't he pay it? He paid it all. And all to him, yo, it was my sin. It was your sin. It was our sin. My sin left a crimson stain. But is anybody in here glad this morning that he took my black sin, washed it with his red blood, and I came out as white as snow? I got to ask a question. I said, won't he do it? Won't he redeem you? Won't he heal you? Won't he deliver you? Won't he respond to you? Ain't the Lord all right? You ought to lift up your hands and give God a praise. Oh, yes. I've been preserved to praise him. I've been preserved to be a witness of his redeeming power. Somebody shout, I've been preserved to praise him. Have I got any preserved saints on the phone, on the Facebook? Have I got any preserved saints? I've been preserved to praise him. We extend the invitation to discipleship at this time. David, David's posture changed from a student to a teacher. David said, I'm, I'm going to teach you what the Lord requires. David declared, if you desire life, life, if you desire many days, if you desire to see good, David becomes a teacher for us this morning. But there, there is yet another. He is the good shepherd. Christ, he came that you might have life. Zoe, Zoe, life. What does that mean? Life in its fullness. Life in its abundance. Beloved, there is, there is a difference between existing and living. It is not, if you're unsaved this morning, it is not God's desire for your life just to exist. God, God wants you to live, brother. God wants you to live Sister, he came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. But he, he requires righteousness. The Bible is a believer's book. David was able to say what he said in this psalm with confidence. Because David had a relationship with God through his faith. David was the apple of God's eye through his faith. Not that David was perfect, but David was pardoned. He was redeemed, as it says in verse number 20. And beloved, Jesus Christ died the wages of. that There had to be a price of equal or greater value in order to save you if you are not saved. Romans 3.23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the wages of sin is death. It's the same price for all of us, no matter what you did, no matter where you came from, no matter the mistakes that you made. The sin is sin, and the redemption value, the wages is the, are the same. And the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ is that, is that Jesus Christ redeemed. He paid the price for your sin with his blood. Is there one this morning? Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. With a heart, man believeth unto righteousness. God is looking for your heart. And then with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I am redeemed, bought with a price. Jesus has changed 
my whole life. Has he changed anybody's life? He's changed my life. He's changed my life. Yes. Oh, anybody ask you just who, who I am, tell them I am redeemed. Oh, thank you, God. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving, redeeming me. It was a high price to pay, but thank you, Jesus. I am redeemed. Uh, thank you, God. If you made that decision, if, if you know that, that God's spirit touched your heart, our, our information is on our website, mobcstafford.com. You can call the church, or if you have access to Facebook, you can send us an, uh, a Facebook message with, some con with the contact information of your choice, and we will call you. We, we will pray with you the sinner's prayer, and we will celebrate your salvation, and we will let you know what the next steps are in your new walk with Christ. Perhaps you're seeking a church home. God has been, God has been blessing this church uh, over the past nine months to a year that he's still sending people this way. He, he is still sending people that is inquiring of the Lord through this place, which is called the Mount Olive Baptist Church. We, we beseech you, we encourage you to reach out to Christ. Reach out like that little child did, reach up your hand and reach out to Jesus and God will take your hand. And if it is his will, if it is his will, we, we hear, we hear, our, we are primed, we are ready, we would be excited, expected to receive you and to walk with you and to teach you as David taught in this text about this wonderful phase, this wonderful journey in your life. Amen. Amen. Huh. Bought me with a price. Amen. As we go to the altar, as we go to the altar, even, even at your homes, you're, you're in your homes this morning, Watching us, listening, you're in your home. Christ said that there's a, there's a closet, there's a closet, a private place, a private space where you can invite God's presence in. And I believe by faith, according to the promises of God's word, God is able to, to transform that closet into a place of worship, into an altar that you can leave cares, leave concerns at the altar. It is in John chapter 17 where Christ lifted up his eyes. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our eyes to you. As we open this prayer, we open it as David did. We, we bless your name at all times. We bless your name. Your praise is continually in our mouth. Before we petition you of anything, we, we praise you. We extol you. We, we just want to pause to acknowledge how awesome you are. We, we come in a holy fear, a holy reverence of you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, you require righteousness. So we confess our sins before you. We confess our transgression, our iniquity, our fault before you. Because you taught us through your servant David that you require righteousness. Touch, touch our mouths, touch our tongues. That every word that we speak will, will, will speak 
the, 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 the Spirit, speaking the Spirit of God and reflect the Christ that is in our lives. You require righteousness. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will respond to us. As we submit this prayer this morning, many of us are yet still in certain situations that we are not sure how we're going to make it out of. But your Bible promised us, your, your word told us in verse number 15 that you respond to us. Let your eyes be on us that you see what we go through. And God, when we cry out, we're crying out right now that you will hear our prayer. Deliver us from all of our trouble. Somebody is afflicted this morning with the trouble of sickness. Cure COVID in the name of Jesus. Cure cancer in the name of Jesus. Deliver, deliver from sickness, mind, body, and spirit in the name of Jesus. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Deliver us from our afflictions. Lord, we need you to heal the land. We have an inauguration coming up, Lord, in three days. And God, if last week, if what happened last week, two weeks ago, is any indication of what the devil is trying to do, we bind the devil right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, heal the land. And bring the devil and his evildoers under divine submission in the name of Jesus. God, we, we pray for breakthrough this morning. Somebody's going through, but God, we, we trust, we know in the name of Jesus that we're going to break through because what we've been through did not break us. Because you have a prophetic word of our lives. And finally, God, we just pray for redemption. If anybody is not saved this morning, God, we pray that you will touch unsaved hearts, that they will come crying out to you, Lord, what must I do to be saved? Lord, as we conclude this prayer, we, we ask that you will comfort the Parker family, the Vines family. God, we lift up the Branham family in the name of Jesus. We submit this prayer in faith. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I have been preserved to praise him. Amen. Our closing doxology. And our benediction. Amen. Join us this Wednesday for Bible study. Thank you for all of you for joining us in worship. to him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, I will save you with glory and majesty, both now and forever. <laughs>